Today we're going to hop in the Luscombe and meet a very special guest up in Truckee, California. He's got one of the first brand new, most uh, technologically advanced stole aircraft, short takeoff or landing aircraft, available on the market today. He's got the first production one, just finished it up. So the winds are light, but the temperatures are hot, so we want to get uh, out of Truckee before noon today. Beat that density altitude. So let's get going. You've seen him on Facebook, you've seen him on YouTube. <laughs> Here he is, the world famous Kevin Quinn, man. Hey, how are you? All Glad right, to meet you. finally get to meet you, and here she is. This is my beast. The beast. Look at this, man. The world's most coolest super cub. Look at the size of this thing. Good lord, I can't even get up to the cowling. <laughs> Thirty-five inch bush wheels. Good times. Big wing. Yeah. Big Keller flaps. Got Tony's TK uh, one monster shocks, and then the big T3 tail suspension back there. And I love it. I'm absolutely obsessed. You, you're hooked, huh? Yeah. It's, a, it's a winner. The weight came out okay for you? It did, yep. 13, uh, just over 1,300 pounds with 35s on it. And um, I'm probably going to go through a whole bunch of different props from Cato, but they make a great prop. And oh, yeah. It's, uh, uh, it's an awesome little aircraft. I just, I'm, I'm, it's my new girlfriend. I'm obsessed. <laughs> You've always been obsessed, man. The performance <laughs> is incredible. It really is. Huh. You, you were concerned a little bit about the weight, but that's not a factor. That big wing with the leading edge slats and uh, those big Doug Keller flaps, now called performance flaps, mm -hmm. it hangs on that wing. I just landed in front of you and I, my yeah. touchdown speed was about 20 mile an hour. <laughs> oh man. Huh. And what engine are you running? I'm running the uh, Barrett built Superior engine, which is the O360 carbureted. And uh, we hopped it up at Dyno to 200 horsepower. O360, so 180 horse, carbureted. Yep. Constant speed? Uh, no, fixed pitch. Fixed pitch. Yep. Uh huh. All right. Well, let's check out some of the details on this build. Now, this is the the company is um, Backcountry Super Back Cubs. Country Super Cubs. Look them up on the internet. Yep. We're not going to talk about how much this costs. It costs a lot. But if you look on the Backcountry the... Super Cubs out of Douglas, Wyoming, uh, you can get the the basic kit, kit yeah. before anything else yeah. for about ninety grand with all the upgrades, the Keller flaps, oh, tiny okay. shocks, uh -huh. etc. Then you're going to be into it for another hundred grand building it and doing some things. Getting the and engine, so getting the avionics, and we've got about two hundred grand into it. When you see the Garmin G3 Touch in there, it's it's that's like cheating. I mean, <laughs> you touch the screen, there's more bells and whistles in there. You that guys I can even and your understand. bells and whistles. You got a bitch and Betty in here too? Oh my God. Why do you call that she, stuff in a bush plane? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's been. Yeah. Oh, I'm man. really proud of her. It's been a long time coming. It took about a year to build, and uh, I was a big part of the build. Of course, the folks at Bentwing Aviation. You know, they, they took great care of me, and without their care and guidance, I wouldn't be where it is today. It's the only one in the world flying right, right now. Right, this is the first one. The first one. The first this, one. This is serial number number four. Did they call this revision two? This or? is the revision right. two. And uh -huh. so, as an idea comparing to a normal traditional SQ, the fuselage is five and a half inches taller mm -hmm. inside. So, for big guys like myself, mm -hmm. you know, I got a lot of headroom and back seat room. Mm -hmm. The overall fuselage itself is 18 inches longer. The tail feathers, the vertical, is eight and a half inches taller than a traditional SQ, two and a half inches wider. Mm -hmm. Wings are virtually the same. That backcountry wing is, is something spectacular. The leading edge slats, right. people ask about all these all the time, but they really maneuver on the base of the angle of attack that you come in. They don't affect cruise speed. You know, another big thing we were concerned about was how fast we're gonna be able to go with the big tires. And I'm cruising around at 2,400 square, running 85, 88 mile an hour. And uh, I got great, great cruise performance on it. So these slats do not pop out. They're fixed, but they they rotate. They fix and they rotate depending upon the angle of attack and they go down uh -huh. the entire length of the wing. Brilliant, all right. It's you may, amazing. You may be performing a slip yeah. and have one open and one partially open uh -huh. and just because of the airflow. Right. The other big thing about the wing in itself is these Doug Keller flaps. Right. You can see that the flaps on a traditional cups are about six feet long. These are nine and a half feet long. But it's a two split Fowler yeah, flap it's the design. Fowler flap, and I actually could go one more. Whoa! Go to 80 plus so that's where you get that hang time. You can hang on it. Oh, man. 
look at that lightweight split so, fowler flap design. That in itself is, is worth its weight in gold. And then, uh, you know, another really cool mod is when you look back here at the tail, focus on that Z3 suspension. You can dampen it or soften it. Watch your head as you back up here. I'll lift this thing waist high. Uh -huh. I'm gonna drop it. Watch what it does okay, for clear. rebound. There's no it, bounce. It just it stops it. it uh huh. And so, like a dirt bike, you got rebound and compression adjustment settings on that rear shock. Yeah, the rebound is literally right. this little red dial here. You uh -huh. can roll it out so that you can literally make it stiffer, which you get a little bounce, which is no bueno. Wow. Or you roll it out so that you just have that zero compression. And of course, they beefed up all of these attach points here over the Super Cub design. Then the shocks as well, you know. The two right, look at these the twin basically racing suspension shocks here uh, another really cool mod is is that you know and a lot of guys will argue and they say this mod inside the cabin here is is frivolous but these guys at vintage aerofab a traditional stick has play mm -hmm. and you look at this stick up here with aerofab there is no play and it's uh -huh. just precise roll where uh -huh. you can fly a traditional cub you got about a an eighth to a quarter inch of slop. Mm -hmm. You spend two hundred thousand dollars on these airplanes. I don't want any slop. Mm -hmm. So you know, what's another twenty five hundred bucks? <laughs> <laughs> Just... It's it's precise. It's an overkill mod, but it's absolutely precise and then we've got the electric trim mm -hmm. the electric trim is spot on and so with those flaps it's just a bam 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 as opposed to reaching up and turning your dial you don't have enough time and so everything is just uh, right and it's now. a fast it's electric fast. motor okay cool really and all this is removable in the rear here yeah. and huge this is the and big advantage kind of unique, unique advantage with this is yeah this pop that open door. Look at the uh, size of that rear door. And this literally, this is just a piece of fabric that closes from the back. That, right. You know, I can lay in here. You got plenty of room. You could even put, well, you got to watch your CG. And I understand this could be a third seat folding out here, facing backwards. Out, just for the weight factor, I'll probably never use it as a third seat. I will use it to sleep back here. But imagine putting your wife back here facing backwards. <laughs> She's going to be very happy with that. So. <laughs> That'd be a pretty barfy ride, yeah, I thought. But man. I could take that seat out lay it down and then all of a sudden you've got this huge option to sleep camp relax we were concerned about weight and cg the cg came out on this at 16.4 16.5 which puts me right at my forehead mm -hmm. and uh the weight's great i flew this with it's got 48 gallon tanks full fuel i had a 275 pound guy here i'm at 230 up front and we had about 100 pounds in back and it flew straight and level hands free and it it satisfied all my concerns and mm -hmm. you know another little mod that we've got in here is that if something happens to the pilot we've got a little yeah. uh you know emergency scenario here that you know you don't dare you really put a switch. ballistic you really got it in there a Not ballistic really. shoot. okay thank goodness <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say you're gonna need a hell of a says a lot of weight to yeah, carry this thing down it's more of a joke but it is what it is <laughs> don't touch the red guarded switch the big windows you can fly with these big windows yeah open. and you got it worked out so you still got the throttle can Yep. control working correctly and it just splits the top half there and then both the clamshell doors traditional cub style here real simple and then you know we were concerned about the big window vibrating there's zero vibration uh-huh and we, we put locks on there for the sake of being able to lock it mm -hmm. but it flies it flies hands free i fly the whole time basically with the windows up yep both windows open you can fly with your arms out there I'm blown away by the performance of this thing. It's, it's, it I've is never flown an aircraft with such quality performance. A super, super cub. All set up for float fittings already. I mean, look at the size of these things. They're half as big as I am. Uh, and so you, what kind of PSI are you running right now? You know, right now, because I'm operating in and out of pavement here at Truckee, there's five pounds of pressure. There's a lot of pressure in there. For off-field ops, I'd run about two and a half pounds of pressure. Yeah, that seems like, yeah, wow. But again, you know, less air, squashy tire, mm -hmm. rubs on the pavement. We try to avoid real tight turn radiuses for the mm -hmm. sake of wearing them down. Wearing them down. Yeah. Um, and then you got uh, additional, quite a bit of additional travel. What do you think the total travel on your suspension? You know, every shock is different, but I think that you're getting every bit of, you know, I'm just going to throw out there four, six inches or so, give uh -huh. or take, you know. But a lot of that is made up by the wheels the themselves, wheels, the you tires. Want the shock to take the compression. Mm -hmm. Tony likes us with these shocks to run more air in the tires. 
and I don't want to disagree, but there also is that fine line of, you know, these tires are made to roll over things, and there's a little bounce in the tire if there's too much air. And so there's that fine line between utilizing the shock and letting air out of these tires so that, you know, everything is right on par. But I would be the first to admit right now I have too much air in there. <laughs> and that's only at, what, 5 PSI? Yeah. yeah. And, of course, you know, these cables are just in the event something fails here, this should prevent the gear from collapsing altogether crashing through the bushes. We made a bunch of mods for the cooling. These aircraft are notorious for cooling. We put these louvers in. For Is that winter, adjustable? We're actually going to put uh, oh, no, they're fixed. for adjustable. We made it ready and raring for Oshkosh and uh, I just I was away from the family for right. so long I just couldn't justify leaving them again you know. Right. Uh, I'm lucky to have an airplane let alone leave them for another two weeks. Because you were up in Wyoming finishing this project up. Maybe, yeah yeah. yeah. All right, the Backcountry Super Cub, the revision first two. one, revision two, the only, first one in the nation. Only one flying in the world right now. That's right, and this is a monster cub, and we're going to see some incredible performance out of this this thing, especially with Kevin. Kevin, you've uh, you got a 180, you got a Highlander. Yes, uh, you've go. he's really gone a long way of reinvigorating the sport of stole flying here in Northern California. You've developed a number of yep. airstrips. Yep. Um, we put and on what, the High Sierra flying. The High Sierra flying. Yes, See that on YouTube? Yeah. Eighth year, Dead Horse, it's going to be this year. At Dead Cow Lake Bed. We yeah. do our stole drag races there. We're trying to get them into the Reno Air races. Oh, okay. And you can Google stole drag and yeah. see what that's all about. But, you know, the biggest thing is just getting people into the backcountry. And I'm born and raised in Alaska. I, I spent uh, my entire life there growing up with my pops flying in the back of his Helio Couriers and Super Cubs. Uh -huh. and here I've been in Truckee for flying almost 20 years now, and uh, in Truckee in particular. And, you know, it's a great spot. We have the local Nevada desert here that's endless, and then we've got numerous ranches that we've yep. been given access to. Hot spring to. locations. I mean, yeah. it's, flying here in California is awesome because we have this beautiful weather every day. But yeah, you wouldn't think, you know, until Kevin came along, this kind of backcountry flying in California, we all thought it was kind of forbidden or you couldn't yeah. do it, but you really opened up the door on this, and we really thank you for that. And did you set a, some kind of a skiing record? here recently <laughs> or just the... we we did yeah i mean that's probably a lot of people look at it as like my redneck stupid stunt but <laughs> we uh water skied literally from north shore of lake tahoe to south shore of lake tahoe and then up the west shore and we ended up going about 40 miles on the water we were on the water for about 50 some minutes <laughs> when you're doing that what are you doing with the brakes on or off off all the time all the when time you ever land yeah anywhere with, with your the brakes, brakes on, on yeah so all these folks you out here talking about Oh, you got to deal with the brakes on. Absolutely not. You can hit the brakes and you can see the tires stop turning, but leave your brakes off and just roll and fly. And believe it or not, it's actually one of the easier things that you can do in an airplane. And huh. I think that it's a necessary skill for the fact that we fly over these right. mountains with water. Yep. If in the event you have an engine out, you should be able to know how to hide your plane and your aircraft to be able to make it to a beach rather mm -hmm. than just ditch your aircraft in the middle of water. Not that I'm telling you to go out and try it. Yeah. Make sure you do it with somebody that knows how to do it. It's it's just a necessary skill to have in your bag of tricks. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't dare just go out and do it because there's a lot more to it than just hot dogging around and whatnot. You know, that stunt in particular was something that just worked out. My buddy had a helicopter with a big red camera. Oh, on. yeah, right, yeah. He called me and said, uh, hey, you have any interest to go water skiing? And I told him about this idea of water skiing from one end of Tahoe to the other. And he says, I'll be there tomorrow morning. And, All right, let's go make this happen. I can't promise you. The well, red next stunt. You know, conditions have to be good. It's probably the one and only time we'll ever do that. It was legal. We mm -hmm. didn't bust any FARs. We had a lot of communication and such. Good, but, good, good. You know, don't just go out and do it. And what's your day job? You run a helicopter operation. I run a operation. heli operation, Points North Heli Adventures. There up it in is. Cordova, Alaska. We're coming mm -hmm. up on 20 years. We've become one of the largest heli ski operations in the United States. We've been part of the Warren Miller ski movies now for mm -hmm. 14, 15 years running. And uh, very, very fortunate to have a, a business that's uh, succeeding like it is. And, good. And uh, it's, it's, you know, that's really my whole life. Very good. All right, Kevin Quinn and the new backcountry Super Duper Cub Revision 2. Watch for it on YouTube soon. Got your spot tracker. But then I thought, you know what?